Hey guys, so welcome back. Um, today we are going to be starting a new unit. So um, take a look at the table of contents that is right over here. You need to make sure if you have your spiral notebook um, to update that. We are going to be working on ratios in this unit. And then later on in the unit, we're going to be learning about rates and unit rates. So today we are going to be doing um, ratio notes which involves Skittles. Don't worry if you are at home and you have to do this online. Um, if you're nice to your teacher, maybe when you get back, they might save some Skittles for you. Um, and then we're going to be talking about ratio tables as well. So there's two pages that we are getting in our notebooks today. Make sure you look at the um, page for today's lesson to try to find those and print them out if you can. Okay, so with that being said, also, if you're in Ms. Simmons' class, you guys have a different table of contents page. You guys are on a different page number, but you have the same things that are going in. You guys are just on page 23 and 24. Um, Miss Kelly's class, I'm not sure what page you guys are on, so you'll have to message her and ask. All right, so let's get started. With this Skittles activity, you guys are just going to be um, following along with my... Um, with my bag of Skittles that I opened since you guys are not in class today. So on that page, you can go ahead and take note of the different colors that you have in your bag of Skittles. So we had a total of 14, and then we had one red, four purple Skittles, green, um, green Skittles, there were five, yellow Skittles, one, and orange, there were three. This is um, information we're going to need for later on in the lesson. Okay, um, all right, so that being said, um, I'm going to move you guys through. On the next slide, this is a video that you guys can go watch for fun. I'm not going to spend your time right now as you're listening to me talk. Um, I'm not going to spend your time, so you can pause this video and go watch that video. It's a great introduction to what we're going to be talking about with ratios. Okay, um, so that being said, what is a ratio? A ratio is a comparison of two values. Okay, so a ratio is a, comp uh, this comparison can be written in three different ways. So here's some examples. Um, the ratio of hot chocolate to gingerbread cookies can be written as two to three. So if we look at our picture over here, there are two hot chocolates and then three gingerbread cookies. So we write this ratio two to three. Now notice it's there's three different ways you can write it. You write it with um, the word two. You can write it with the um, colon, the two dots. And then you can also write it to where it looks like a fraction. This way is my favorite way just because you guys are already familiar with fractions and ratios are very similar to fractions, okay? So um, these are the three different ways that you need to know about how to write a ratio. So we're going to be practicing those ways. Now, let's see. What about the ratio of hot chocolate to Santa hats? So hot chocolate, there's one, two. So we're going to start by writing that two. And then Santa hats, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So two to six is our ratio. Now again, we can write that in three different ways. It's important though that we get the order correct. We can't write six to two because the, these numbers represent something. Um, the first number represents what was gonna be in our first comparison here. We're talking about hot chocolate First, so if we accidentally switched these numbers around and said six to two, then we would be saying there are six hot chocolates and two Santa hats, but the opposite is true. So make sure you pay close attention to the order that you're writing your ratios in. All right, what about the ratio of Santa hats to gingerbread cookies? Well, we already know there are six Santa hats. That number needs to come first, and then there are three gingerbread cookies. Now notice this ratio looks like an improper fraction. For ratios, it's okay to leave 
the fraction to look like an improper fraction because we don't want to change it to a whole number and then a fraction. That mixed number is not going to help tell us the ratio of Santa hats to gingerbread cookies. We wouldn't end up knowing what that whole number really is. Okay, so it's okay to leave it like this when we're talking about ratios. All right, so then we have 6 to 3, and then we can also write it 6 to 3. Notice I read all of these the same exact way when we're talking about ratios, 6 to 3, 6 to 3, 6 to 3. Okay, and the last one, ratio of hot chocolate to t all total items. Well, we know there are two hot chocolate. Now we need to count up all of the items. Well, we know there's six Santa hats. Then we have seven, eight, nine, plus, don't forget to go back and include the hot chocolate as items. Even though we've already talked about the hot chocolate in our first part of the ratio, it is still part of the total items. So if we have nine before the hot chocolate, then this would make 10 and 11. So two to 11. 2 to 11, and 2 to 11. There are 11 total items in our picture. All right, let's look at the next slide. So now we're going to move in. We've talked about what a ratio is. Now we're going to talk about what an equivalent ratio is. Okay, an equivalent ratio is a ratio that has the same simplified value. Okay, so... They're equivalent because they can be reduced to the same thing. Look at this first example. Example number one. Now, this one's really easy to see why they are equivalent because I can think about, well, what two times what would get me to six? Two times three. And then the same thing should be true on the bottom. I should be able to multiply three times three to get me to nine. If I multiply by something different, then they are not equivalent. They have to be multiplied by the same thing. Now, going back to this definition of simplified value, let's talk about that for just a moment, okay? Instead of thinking about how can I get from two to six, instead I could think about, well, look at this fraction right here. I think I can simplify this fraction by dividing by the same number, six divided by three and nine divided by three. When I do this, 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 9 divided by 3 is 3. Notice, I got the same ratio that I had over here, 2 to 3, 2 to 3. So 6 to 9 is equal to 2 to 3. Um, these equivalent ratios are going to be very important. Now, you won't always be able to think about how can I get from 2 to 6. That's an easy way for me to see it because then I'm like, okay, well, 3 times 3 is 9. That works out. Um, sometimes you're going to have to simplify it in order to realize that they are equivalent. So let's look at example two. This is one of those that I'm talking about. I can't think of anything that I can multiply by to get from four to five. That's just not going to work. So instead, I need to think of a way that I can simplify these ratios to see if they are equivalent. What can go into five? that can also go into 10. Five. Five can go into both of these numbers because these are multiples of five. So five divided by five is one, and 10 divided by five is two. Well, okay, one to two is not exactly the same right here as four to eight, so I need to check about four to eight. Okay, can I divide four and eight by something. I'm going to rewrite this down here where I have more space. Can I divide four and eight by the same number? Okay, I can start with two. If I don't see something bigger, I can always start with two because these are um, even numbers. I know that they're divisible by two. So four divided by two is two, and eight divided by two is four. Well, I still didn't get one to two, but I can keep simplifying. I can reduce this even further because I still have two even numbers. So 2 divided by 2 and 4 divided by 2 will work. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. Notice I got the same 
simplified value. That means that 4 to 8 is equivalent to 5 to 10. So just because you can't think of what can you get from 4, like how can you multiply to get to 5 from 4, that, that way didn't work as easily this time. But if we can reduce it to the same value, then it is also equivalent. So let's look at some of those examples we had before. Santa hats to gingerbread. Okay, remember we had six Santa hats to three gingerbread cookies. We want to see if we can write an equivalent ratio to this. An easy way to do that is to see if we can just go ahead and simplify it. The simplified value will be an equivalent ratio. So can we divide both of these numbers by the same thing? Well, we can divide 6 by 3 and 3 by 3. So 6 divided by 3 is 2. And 3 divided by 3 is 1. So for every two Santa hats, there are one, there's one gingerbread cookie. And we can kind of make groups of that if we wanted to see that. We can see, okay, here's two Santa hats and one gingerbread cookie. Here's two Santa hats and one gingerbread cookie. And then up here, there's two Santa hats and one gingerbread cookie. So they kind of match up together. Um, that's why the equivalent ratio works because we can also see that comparison within our example. All right, now hot chocolate to Santa hats, that was two to six. Can we simplify this ratio to find an equivalent ratio? Okay, 2 can be divided by 2, and 6 can be divided by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. <clears throat> so 1 to 3. For every one hot chocolate, there are three Santa hats. Um, it's important to note, too, so this is the way you can find equivalent ratios by simplifying, but we can also find an equivalent ratio by multiplying. We could multiply both of these numbers by the same number and we would get another equivalent ratio. For example, if we multiplied by 5, then we're going to get an equivalent ratio. 1 times 5 is 5. 3 times 5 is 15. So 5 to 15 is also equivalent to 1 to 3. You just have to make sure you multiply or divide by the same thing. All right. So what you guys are going to do now is you're going to finish up your Skittles activity. I want you guys to go through and write your ratios, red to total, purple to total, green to total. You're going to be writing your ratios in those three different ways. Okay. Then I want you to check and see, can you reduce the ratio? Can you find an equivalent ratio by simplifying? So you're going to do that with the color to total but you're also gonna just do the color to a different color. So red to purple, green to yellow, purple to orange. See if, that, um, if there are also any of those that you can simplify or reduce to find an equivalent ratio. You can pause the video um, now and go ahead and finish this up. All right, so then on the back of your um, of your Skittles activity, there are these two extra examples that I want to talk to you about. So number four says Oliver had two yellow Skittles and seven red Skittles. Complete the table with equivalent ratios. Remember that equivalent ratios we can find by simplifying, but we can also find by multiplying. So I'm going to do one example for you, but then I want you to finish out the table with your own equivalent ratios. So here's my first ratio of two yellow Skittles to seven red. So that means, well, what if he had, what if we multiply this by two? So two times two would give me four yellow Skittles, but then I need to also have twice as many red Skittles for the ratio to stay the same. So seven times two is 14. Okay, then right here I could multiply my original by 
three. So two times three would be six. So if I have six yellow Skittles, then maybe I would multiply um, down here as well. Seven times three would give me 21. So if I had six, if Oliver had six yellow Skittles, then he would also have 21 red Skittles for the ratio to stay the same. All right, so you're going to go ahead and finish out these other equivalent ratios. And then number five, Caleb had five red Skittles, two yellow Skittles, one green Skittle, two orange Skittles, and four purple. Complete the uh, equivalent ratios table with your yellow Skittles to your total. Well, we know that our first ratio is going to be, okay, he has two yellow, and we need to add up to find the total. So five plus two is seven, plus one is eight, plus two is 10, and then plus four, that would be 14. Okay, so you're going to fill in the rest of this table as well with some equivalent ratios. Pause the video now and finish up those tables. <laughs> All right, so if you kept going by my pattern, um, up here in the top, you could have multiplied by 4 next, and you would have gotten 2 times 4 is 8, and 7 times 4 is 28, and then times 5 would have been 10 and 35, and then times 6 would be 12, and then 42, and then um, 2 times eight would be, did I do that right? No, I'm on seven, sorry. Two, uh, two times seven would be 14, and then seven times seven is 49. You could have multiplied by something different, so I don't know if you got the exact same as me. Okay, then down here, um, you could have just kept multiplying, you know, multiply by two, multiply by three, but I don't know if you noticed or not, we can simplify this ratio first. We can divide both of these by two. So I'm gonna show you this way. It might not have been the way that you chose and that's okay. Um, two divided by two is one and 14 divided by two is seven. So for every one Skittle, he has a total of seven Skittles. Okay, then I could multiply by three because I already have the multiplied by two. One times two is two, seven times two is 14. I could do one times three would be three, and then seven times three would be 21. Then I could do this one times four would be four, and seven times four would be 28. And then I could do times five, which I would get five, and seven times five is 35. Again, you might have had double those numbers because of you multiplying just the, the original 2 and 14 times the different numbers, and that's okay. All right, let's move on. We have three more problems to go over. Um, here's another example of a table that you might see where you have to fill in the empty values. So we have a ratio up here of A's to B's is 3 to 2. So that's telling us, remember, the order is important. So that first one is A's. Then the second number is B's, okay? So let's fill in the table with the missing information. Well, this first example, we already know three A's would mean how many B's? Two. That's our original ratio that it gave us. Now we have to fill in the missing pieces by thinking about, well, how in the world did I get from two to four? What did I multiply by? 2 times 2 would get me to 4. So then I need to do the same thing on this side. 3 times 2 would get me 6. So for 6 A's, I should have 4 B's. Now, we're going to keep using that method, trying to fill in and see what did we multiply by. So let's look at 3 to 12. How did I get from 3 to 12? I multiplied by 4. So then I need to start with 2 and multiply by 4 to get to my number over here. 2 times uh, 4 is 8. All right, and then let's look at 
how in the world could I get from 3, this is going to be a big arrow, 3 to 18? 3 times 6 would get me to 18. So then 2 times 6 is 12. And now we have filled in our missing values. Now the important thing is, is um, I would always go back to that original Notice how I went back to that original ratio every single time. Um, some of you might have said, but Miss Waters right here, I could go from 6 to 12 by just multiplying by 2, and that seems kind of easy. Well, that's okay, but be careful because then coming right here, how could you get from 12 to 18? That is not as clear. Um, so I like to always go back to that original smaller ratio to fill in my missing values. All right, so let's take a look at this next one. Martin can read three pages in seven minutes. So right here we have three pages. So over here we need to have our original ratio will be, if I can get my color, okay, seven minutes, right? That's how long it takes him to read three pages. So, well, what if he read nine pages? How long would it take him? So 3 times what would get us to 9 times 3. So we need to do the same thing to our 7. We need to multiply it by 3. 7 times 3 is 21. All right, now let's think about what can I multiply by to get from 7 to 42. 7 times what? is 42. 7 times 6. Okay, so then on the other side, we need to multiply 3 times 6. 3 times 6 is 18. So once he reads 18 pages, that probably took him about 42 minutes. All right, now let's take a look at how could I get from, I'm going to go this way this time since I'm running out of space, 3 times what would get me to 27? 3 times 9. 3 times 9 is 27, so then I need to do 7 times 9, which you might not know off the top of your head, okay? So list out your multiplication facts. There's no shame in doing that. And so 7 times 9 is 63. Okay, we've filled in our table. Now let's read our question. How long will it take him to read nine pages? Nine pages. So go back and look at the nine pages. How many minutes did it take him? 21. Make sure you put your units. Minutes. If you don't put your units, then I could have said 21 seconds, 21 hours. Ooh, that would be a long time. Okay, so make sure you fill that in. All right, I want you to pause and try this next one on your own. All right, now that you've tried it on your own, let's look at it together. Five boys can eat 16 slices of pizza. So this first one we know is 16. Okay, now these are bigger numbers, so it might have been a little bit more challenging for you. How can I get from 16 to 32? Well, we actually just multiplied it by 2. We just doubled it, okay? So 5 times 2 is 10. So if we had 10 boys, they could probably eat double what the, um, if we have 10 boys, the, we could probably eat double what the 5 boys did. All right, so now let's take a look at the next ratio that we have. So 5, how could I get from 5? to 20. 5 times 4 is 20, and so we need to do 16 times 4. Now this is something you might have had to work out. 16 times 4, I don't really know off the top of my head. So 4 times 6 is 24, carry your 2. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2 is 6, so it's 64. So if we had 20 boys, we probably need 64 slices of pizza. And now let's do the last one. 5 times what would get me to 35? 5 times 
7. So we need to do 16 times 7. Again, I don't know this one off the top of my head, so I'm going to come over here and work it out. 7 times 6 is 42, carry my 4. 7 times 1 is 7, plus the 4. 8, 9, 10, 11, so that's 11, so 112. If I have 35 boys that are eating some pizza, I probably need to get about 112 slices. Now, let's look at the question. How many slices can 20 boys eat? 64 slices. All right. Um, great job making it through this video. What I um, need you to do now is go back to the page for today, and you are going to, let's see if I can exit out of this so you can see. You guys are going to be um, walking through the steps on its learning today. So let me show you what the page looks like. Sorry, it's taking me a second. I should have had it opened up. Okay, so here is today's lesson. You guys have already um, watched these videos over here, and this was the slideshow that we just worked through together. Okay, um, if you wanted to watch that video, it's right here in that slideshow. But you guys have already done your Skittles activity, so you're done with that section. Now you're going to be moving on to the practice. Okay, so see if you can finish this practice. It um, is just talking about some of those tables and equivalent ratios. And then homework for tonight, which I would just go ahead and do, is um, this museum mishap. Okay, um, it doesn't take too long. It's just um, to give you a little intro of what we're going to be learning about tomorrow. So you can click on the museum and it'll take you to the Thinking Blocks website. Then you can um, follow along with this. If you can't print this out, then you just work it out on scratch paper. That's completely fine. All right, hope you guys have a good day.